Welcome to Compelled Church Online. We are so glad that you have chosen to join us this weekend for church. Uh, we try to keep things really simple around Compelled, and so our purpose is said like this. We love God, we love people, and we serve the world. And so our heart is that you're encouraged this weekend as you join us and watch church together. A couple things about this that we want you to, to be aware of. We would love for you to jump in the chat and to dialogue about what's going on in the service and what the Lord's speaking to you and be encouraged in that. If you would like prayer at any time, there's a, a pray button down there that you can click and, and that'll take you to a separate uh, chat box with the host where you'll be able to privately share your need and uh, we'll come alongside you and pray with you there. We also have a feature that's going to pop in that chat right now where you can invite a friend. It's always good to bring somebody along and to show them what God is doing in your life. And so take advantage of that right now. Would you click that and invite somebody to join you at church this weekend? We are so grateful that you're here today. And so we want you to know a few things is this, is that we love you. We pray that you're encouraged today. And our hope is that you enjoy the gathering time as we find out a little bit more about who God created us to be. Hello, welcome to church. Glad you're with us. Uh, we're going to worship. And just to clear, the foundation that we can build our lives on that is unchanging, unwavering, and will always remain the same is Jesus. And so as we sing this song that we're going to build our life upon the rock, the love and the foundation of who God is, and just worship with us and, and sing along. Open up my eyes 
Compelled Church, welcome. Thank you so much for spending a little bit of your day with us. My hope today is this, that you would leave encouraged wherever you are, that you would leave filled, and not only that, but you would leave challenged just a little bit in your walk with God and in your faith. So with that said, here's what I need you to do. Here's what I need you to do. I need you to use that link that's popping on your screen right now, and I need you to invite a friend to watch online with you. That's right, invite a friend. Did you know this, that somewhere around 80% of people who go to church do so because somebody from that church invited them? It's a great habit that we have to get into our mindset, so don't think about it, don't overthink the decision. Invite somebody to church using that link on your screen. If you are new with us, or if this is your first time watching, we'd love to connect with you. Also, you can use that link on the screen right now to connect with us. We'll give you some information and about some upcoming things about us as a church and what we're going to be doing. It'll only take you a second, I promise. And listen, if you don't hear anything that I say today, you're going to want to stick around for the entire duration of this message. And here's why. Because at the end of the message, we're going to have a special announcement about Compelled Church reopening given by our lead pastor, Nate Ellerton, and our executive pastor, Rick Flood. You are not going to want to miss it, so stick around for that, all right? Today is Pentecost Sunday, and I know you're probably, and I, I can hear the crickets. I know I, they're going on at your house like, what did this dude just say? That's right. It is Pentecost Sunday. We're going to talk about that more in a little bit, but today we're talking about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit's work in our lives. And I know what just happened when I said those two words is that some kind of wall just built up inside of you because maybe you've had a bad experience, maybe you've turned on late night Christian television and saw some wacky things, but I'm going to make you a few promises. I'm not going to be spitting out any wacky theology to you today. I'm not even going to offer you any miracle spring water or nothing like that. But I do believe this, that we need the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives, in this world, and in our churches. And even though you're at home, I can hear your amens to me right now, and that is more than acceptable. You can be excited. The Holy Spirit is something to be excited about. But my prayer is this. Now, whatever bias that you might have with the Holy Spirit, whatever theology that you have, that today you would open up your eyes, that the Holy Spirit would reveal new things about who he is and, and take you deeper into your knowledge and understanding of God because he will always take us further and further. There is no bottom to the depths of his understanding and his grace and his love, but we need the Holy Spirit to take us there, to continue to work in our lives. Listen, if you want to see any change in this life, 
If you want to have any change or experience, any change that actually matters, that actually is going to make a difference, that begins in your heart. In your heart. And the only thing that can work on your heart is the Holy Spirit. We can change our behaviors. We can change all those exterior things about us and we think we're making change. But the Holy Spirit is the one that changes our hearts. And that's where it all begins. I titled this sermon, Rushing Wind. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in a moment. But I believe this, that the air has gotten stale in some of our churches, in some of our homes, and in some of our hearts. Have you ever been around stale air? It's not a good thing, man. It's stuffy, kind of like it is right now. It's humid. It's stuffy. It's like you just feel uncomfortable. I believe I believe that is what our life looks like without the Holy Spirit. We need his presence, his breath, his spirit to blow upon us just like a rushing wind. And that is how we are going to see change in this world and in our lives. So again, it's Pentecost Sunday. If you have your Bibles, uh, you can turn to Acts chapter 2. Give a shout out. Show some digital love with the heart emojis. I can't see them right now, but I'm believing that you're clicking that heart emoji right now because you love the scripture, you love the word of God, of course. I'm gonna give you six facts really fast about Pentecost Sunday. I know you didn't maybe come here to to learn maybe some things about Pentecost Sunday, some facts, maybe you just wanted to hear some good old-fashioned preaching, but I believe context and the history of this stuff is so important. So six facts about Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost Sunday marks the day when the Holy Spirit descended upon the apostles. Number two, Pentecost Sunday occurs 50 days after Easter. Pentecost comes 10 days after the ascension of Jesus. So, all right, if you, if you lost me already, let me give you a quick timeline. So Jesus was crucified on the cross. Three days later, he rises from the grave, right? He spends 40 days with his followers, and then he ascends into heaven. Ten days later is when Pentecost happens. Pentecost is also known as the birthday of the church. Happy birthday, church. I don't have a cake for you. I know ice cream, no fun hats, no birthday song. But man, we are celebrating today the birthday of the church when God would put his power into his people to t- take the kingdom of God further and advance his plan and his mission here on this earth. The Pente- Pentecost fulfills Jesus' promise to send the counselor and the spirit of truth As in John 16, Pentecost launches the large-scale spreading of the gospel after the ascension of Jesus. So let's get into our scripture, Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Here's what it says. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind, much like maybe you've just heard that thunder on the camera, kind of like the weather that's going on right now. Maybe you heard that. It's going on like a violent rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And they appeared to them, tongues as a fire, distributing themselves. And they rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit was giving them utterance to do so. What a great passage of scripture. And I know this is one that can be taken out of context and get, it can get really weird really fast, but I do also think there is a danger when we put God in a box and we start confining God to what he can do and what he cannot do. God is all powerful. He can do anything that he wants to do, including coming down with the sound of a violent rushing wind and the presence of flaming fire and, and having men and women speak in tongues. Do you believe that today? I hope that this concept of the Holy Spirit isn't something that's weird to you. It is not weird to us here. We believe that the Holy Spirit still speaks to people today. I still believe that people can be baptized in the Holy Spirit today. I believe that prophecies and miracles and speaking in tongues are still gifts that are for today. All for the purpose of bringing glory to Jesus. 
And that's when it gets weird. When we start making shows about ourselves and wanting to be the star, that is when things get weird. All of these gifts are used to point people to Jesus Christ. I think I just heard another amen from your house. I like it. Keep them coming. The Holy Spirit is part of the Trinity. I'm going to give you a little teaching at the moment. Maybe you've never heard the word Trinity, and maybe you're like, ooh, that word's not in the Bible. Did you know the word Bible is also not in the Bible, but it is still good, isn't it? The word Trinity, you won't find it in the Bible, but it means three in one. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We don't worship three gods, we worship one God with three distinct actions or personality traits, if that's what you want to call it. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And so if you're wondering what is going on in this passage in Acts that we just read, let me break it down for you. Let me break down the big picture of what God is trying to do in and through this. The plan and the mission of God has always been this, to be with his creation, to be with humanity, to have a relationship with people, you and I and ultimately to bring glory to himself. But there's a problem with this whole equation. See, you can read back in Genesis, in the beginning of time, that humanity, they started loving somebody and something more than God themselves. And so a rift came in the relationship. We call that rift sin. And you and I, unfortunately, we are born with it. And that is what keeps us separate from this all-knowing and all-perfect God, no matter how hard you try, no matter how hard I work, we can never make it back into a great standing with, with our creator. Enter Jesus. Jesus comes and he pays the price. He pays our sin debt on the cross. But three days later, we see he is, he is raised from the grave. He is resurrected from the grave. He leaves an empty tomb there, and in doing so, I love this, he's basically laughing in the face of the enemy. In doing so, he's basically rendering the enemy powerless as he's being resurrected. He is, he is rendering death and hell and the grave powerless in our lives. And he is raised, of course, by the power of the Holy Spirit. But here's the thing. The plan of God did not stop there. See, Jesus, he paved the road for us to be with the Father, but the Holy Spirit is the one that puts us on that road, and he gives us the strength to move one foot in front of the other. We don't have any power in and of ourselves to do it on our own. Praise God for the Holy Spirit that works and is active in our lives. And so now the mission of God becomes the mission of the church. The mission of God to be with people and to show people love and grace and mercy, that is the mission of the church, his people, his followers. His mission is now our mission. But again, you and I, we can't do this on our own. We can't fulfill the plan and the purpose and the mission that God has for us all on our own power. Listen to this. We cannot simply rely on our natural understanding to live out something supernatural. I'm gonna repeat that. I want, I want that to sink in so deep because I see it in our churches, I see it in our homes, I see it in our world that you and I, we're trying to live out this faith, this supernatural faith, this supernatural salvation in and of ourselves and we don't have the power to do it. We cannot simply rely on our natural understanding to live out something that is supernatural. And so what does the Holy Spirit do? Number one, the Holy Spirit empowers. The Holy Spirit empowers. Listen to this verse in Acts chapter one, verse eight. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and even to the remotest part of the earth. Listen, when we begin to follow Jesus, his mission becomes our mission. That we are to be witnesses of God. We are to be ambassadors of God. We are to be representatives of God's love and his grace and his mercy. We are to usher in this kingdom of heaven here and now. 
And that's what the Holy Spirit empowers us to do. Listen, the Holy Spirit isn't a formula for you to just go and live your best life. The Holy Spirit brings glory to the Father. That when we, when we accept this following Jesus, we are dying to ourselves. Therefore, we might find our lives in Christ and something bigger than ourselves to be witnesses for Jesus, to be ambassadors for Christ with the power of the Holy Spirit, not so we can be the stars, not so we can have our names shining up in the skies, not so everyone can know our names, not so we can get more social media followers. All of it is for the glory and the honor of Jesus Christ. All of it is for God's glory. In our own ability, we are powerless. But the Holy Spirit gives us power to be a witness for him. And I love this because you don't need a Bible degree to do this. You don't have to have the title pastor or priest in front of your name. You don't have to be a perfect human being or think you have it all together. You just have to be willing, willing to go. I don't know what lies that you have heard that you have to be this or that to follow Jesus, but he is calling you right now, right where you are at, no matter who you are or what you have done. Jesus said that his people were to be a light in this dark world. That we are to be a light. And Jesus, Jesus would say it this way. Who would take this lamp and hide it under a shade, right? We are to be a light into this world. Let me, let me bring this up to today's times. You and I as Christ's followers, we we're given these flashlights, all right? And we are to be light in this dark world, but without the power of the Holy Spirit, we don't have the batteries to put inside of this thing. How can we be light without the power of God working in our lives? We are to be light in this world that is dark. We need the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Listen, if you want to live sexually pure, if you want to live selfless, if you want to love more, if you want to break those chains of addiction in your life, you cannot do that in your own strength. If you want to be a witness for the glory of God, we cannot do that in our own power. The world needs a move of the Holy Spirit. Our nation needs a move of God. Our cities, our states, our homes, our hearts need a move with the Holy, the Holy Spirit in our lives. I heard one person say it like this. It's kind of it's like this. If you've ever been to the airport, you see these things, you see people walk in and they have all of their briefcases and their families with them and they're trying to hurry to where they need to go because nobody wants to be late to their flight, you know what I'm saying? And they have these things in a lot of airports. I don't really know what they're called. I just kind of like call them the moving floors when you get on this thing and you know, the thing is moving. It's kind of like the flat escalator. I don't know what it's called. You know what I'm talking about, though, if you've ever been to an airport. And what I see is this. There are so many people who are like, no, you know, I'm not going to use that because, uh, I, I don't know why, because it's scary, because, because maybe there's going to be a reward if I work harder to get to my destination, because if I, if I work harder and if I do this, and if I get to the same place, then maybe there'll be more honor and maybe more glory to my name. And here's what I see. I see so many Christ followers walking around in the same way. That we have access to this right here. We have access to this power. We have access to this thing that's going to move our lives forward. But we refuse to use it. Why? Why? It's like when we, get, when we both get to this destination, if there's somehow going to be a prize for not using it, for not tapping into the power that was there. And you know what that leads to? Dead religion. The Christian life without the Holy Spirit leads to dead religion. And can I tell you this, church? Religion never saved anybody. Religion has done more damage in our world and in our hearts and in our society and in our homes than most things that I have seen. Religion has never saved or healed anybody. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep saying it. I'm gonna keep saying it throughout this whole message. We need the power of the Holy Spirit to move and to work in our lives, to move just like a mighty rushing wind. 
The Spirit of God has the power to change and to save. You see this all throughout Scripture. You go back all the way to Genesis. There was a Spirit of God hovering over the dark and formless world, and he was there to bring beauty and order out of what, something that was dark and chaotic. You can fast forward, and there's the Spirit of God when we enter this valley of dry bones. And the Spirit of God moves, and it breathes on these dry bones, and death becomes life. And these dry bones are brought to life, and they are quenched, and the bones become flesh, because the Spirit of God has power. It is the Spirit of God that raised Jesus from the grave, and that same Holy Spirit is what fell on his followers in the day of Pentecost, and that same Holy Spirit is available to you today, no matter who you are, what you've done, how far you feel like you have gone. It is there, and it is available for you today. I don't know about you. I don't know about you, but I know this, especially in this latest few months where, where man, our world is just in a trial. I know that God is moving. I see it. I hear stories. God is moving. More than maybe I've ever seen him in my 35 years of life, God's spirit is moving and he is working and I don't want to just sit back and watch God from a distance do what he does. I want to actively participate in it. But I can't do that in my own self. I need the power of the Holy Spirit so I can participate and my life can be used for God's purposes. My life can be used for something bigger than myself. I want to participate in what God is doing. I want my life to mean something. And it can only mean something if it's attached to something bigger and something eternal from Jesus. I believe this, that the Christian life should be a life that is filled with adventure and wonder and curiosity and faith. Not comfort, right? Not control, not any of those things. A life of faith. Number two, the Holy Spirit purifies the Holy Spirit purifies. Remember a little bit ago when I talked about that sin problem? That sin, that's a big issue. That sin problem is what keeps you and I separate from God. But there is a remedy for that because the Holy Spirit purifies. And there's so many verses that we could pull out to prove this point, but I want to give you one that the Apostle Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11. Such were some of you but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the Spirit of God. I'm going to take a drink of water. I'm going to let that sink in for you real quick. I know there's a lot of Christianese lingo that you might not understand in there, sanctification, justification. Let me break this down for you. Sanctification means this, to be set apart but it also means this progressive changing of our old habits. When you give your life to Jesus, you are sanctified in the fact that you are completely set apart. You are now in right standing with God. But every day that we live on this earth, we have a sanctification process that is weeding out our old thoughts, our old bad habits, those things that we used to do that just gratified the flesh and not the spirit. Sanctification is cleansing those things. Why? So we can stand justified. So we can come to our Father God, our Creator God, boldly, confidently, assured of our salvation. Amen. We can come to God confidently and boldly, assured of our salvation that is found through Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit that purifies us and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. No matter who you are, what you've done, how far you feel like you've gone away, no matter if you've, if you've made so many mistakes, you feel like you're unforgivable. The Holy Spirit is there to cleanse you and to purify you. I love that. Because of what Jesus has done, because the power of the Holy Spirit, we can have access to God. Did you hear that, church? We can have access to God. I know every single one of you are watching right now from your home or some online device. You're not here at a church building, but that is okay because you have access to God right where you are. You don't need a priest or a pastor or a building. When you give your life to Jesus, 
It says the Holy Spirit indwells in you now, making you a temple of the Holy Spirit. You have access to God, and that is good news for all of us. The Holy Spirit makes us home in our hearts. We have full access to him, the one who was and is and is to come, the king of kings. He resides now in our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Man, maybe you're like me, and maybe you've experienced the, the cleansing work of Jesus. I don't know that there's any other way that I can take my own life and who I used to be before Jesus and get to where I am now without him. When I think back to the addictions that held me down and the bondage that I was in and doing all of these things to satisfy my own selfish desires, I'm so grateful today that the blood of Jesus, that the power of the Holy Spirit cleanses us and purifies us. Are you glad for that today, church? Number three, the Holy Spirit reveals. John 16, 13 says this, but when he The spirit of truth comes. He will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will disclose to you what is to come. Man, we live in a world that is just shrouded and we are just intermingled with lies. You hear them every single day. The enemy wants to tell you lies about who you are, what you're not how worthless you are, how unlovable you are, how unforgivable you are, how, how many times you mess it up, how big of a lost cause you are. We need the Holy Spirit in our lives to reveal the truth to our hearts. That our identity in Christ makes us lovable and makes us worthy and makes us lovable and we are not too far gone. We are not a lost cause. This is the same Jesus who left the 99 for the one and he wants to pursue you to Day and you can have a relationship with him. The Holy Spirit speaks truth into our lives. He teaches us all things. The Holy Spirit reminds us of the words that Jesus spoke to us. That's why it's so important for us to be in the word of God. Because as we read the word of God, the Holy Spirit illuminates and brings to life this word of God. And when we're out in our daily lives, it's the Holy Spirit that is taking what we read and reminding us in our minds, but he's transferring that word and putting it into our hearts, and that is where the change is happening. The Holy Spirit is guiding us into all truth and telling us of the things to come. What I'm trying to say in all this is I think the atmosphere, I think the air in some of our lives, in some of our churches, in some of our homes has gotten stale that we need the breath of God to come in our lives, that we need the Holy Spirit to come upon us just like the rushing wind that we saw on the day of Pentecost. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. Man, maybe as you're listening to me speaking, there's something inside of you that is just welling up. You don't know how to articulate it. You don't know how to explain it, but you feel it. Maybe you're listening to my words and you're crying out, man, there's gotta be more than this. I want more. I have good news for you today. No matter who you are, you can call upon the name of the Lord. You will be saved. You will be forgiven. You will be cleansed. He will reveal things to you. If that's you today, man, what I want you to do is this. On the screens in front of you, you're gonna see a link, man. It's kind of like a digital raise your hand to give your life to Jesus, to begin following Jesus. Click that right now. If that's you, man, if the Holy Spirit is talking on your heart today, click that right now and we'll have someone, one of our online hosts, are gonna pray with you. And man, we are rejoicing with you on the decision that you have made today. But I believe this, that for us, you and I as Christ followers, then we need the Holy Spirit to continue to open up our eyes and open up our hearts. Because just because COVID-19 is here, the mission of God has not stopped. The mission of God has never stopped just because the church building is currently closed. But we're gonna need the power of the Holy Spirit to empower us, to purify us, to reveal to us all the things that he wants us to do. I still believe that the Holy Spirit speaks to his people. I still believe that the Holy Spirit baptizes us and gives us the gifts and the miracles and the prophecies. And I believe we're going to see so many more of these things to come if 
we can get out of our own minds for just a moment. If we can just open up the box that we can put God in sometimes and let him do what he does. If we can decrease in our own minds and our own lives and lay our pride to the side and understand this, our lives are to be witnesses for God's glory. Church, can I pray with you today? God, thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you, God, that you empower us to do what we can't do alone. Thank you that you purify us and you cleanse us from all of our sin and unrighteousness. Thank you, God, that you reveal truth to us, that you guide us, that you lead us, Lord. God, I pray that you would use our lives to glorify you, to be witnesses for you, God. We love you. We thank you, Jesus, for your name alone is worthy of our glory and honor and praise. Amen. Well, listen, as I just said, the mission of God, the mission of the church has not stopped. And uh, here, if you stick around for about 10 more minutes or so, you're going to hear our plans uh, for Compelled Church for our reopening dates given by Pastor Nate and Pastor Rick. Thank you. Great job, Pastor Matt. Uh, he is a wonderful speaker. Good stuff. Yeah, love hearing him teach. He does a good job. But well, we want to take a few minutes and just communicate some of our plans in our heart towards uh, opening up as a church and meeting. And so, uh, Pastor Nate? Yeah. Well, reopening a church for weekend gatherings, I have zero experience at. I've never done it. I've started a church from scratch, which I believe was easier than reopening. But we're happy to announce that we're going to be reopening Man, this COVID crisis, you know, three months ago or two and a half months ago, and we said, hey, we're, we're going to close for a couple weeks. I had no idea that it would be this long. And uh, this is not something new to our church or our community or even our nation. Worldwide, there has been uh, this hiccup in our society, our economy, and, and also uh, the places of worship and for our church and here at Compelled. But we're excited that we're going to be opening back up for our weekend gatherings. Small groups have already started, and uh, I'm, I'm very happy about that. There's been a lot of difficult times right now. We realize that um, through uh, loneliness and separation, and I believe it's time, and we believe that it seems good to us and the Holy Spirit to open on Father's Day weekend. And... That is something we feel really good about. Our uh, leadership is in uh, unity, our board, our staff, and everybody there. And so it's time to have weekend gatherings again. So in the midst of us deciding what we were going to do and what it was going to look like as we opened up, um, we have spent a lot of time in conversation and prayer as a staff and as a board, like Pastor Nate said. And, and we realize this, that there are a lot of different views on what that should look like, a different uh, preference on maybe some of the precautions or procedures that should be in place. And, and our heart in, in waiting until uh, Father's Day is that we would get a little more time to see these things. Mm -hmm. And so here are some of the things that we are going to make decisions on and how we're going to proceed at this point. Um, knowing that some of these things could change uh, depending on what happens in, in culture and society. And so some of those things that we plan to do to make sure that, that we are keeping people safe, but also having a weekend gathering that is, is true to who we are as compelled churches, um, we've committed that the, the building will be uh, obviously cleaned and sanitized through the week, but also in between each of those gatherings. We'll make sure that things are washed down and clean and, and sanitized um, so that there's, there's no issues there. Another thing that uh, we've decided is that we're going to have a little shorter services. One, to give some time for that cleaning so that we can make sure we can do it good, but also just to shorten up that time for us to be together and uh, encourage each other. Uh, we've installed uh, touchless light hey, switches. Don't get used to those one-hour services. <laughs> I, do you think you can do it? I can do it. I think I, I can, do, can it do it. With, the Lord will help me. We'll see. So, uh, again, these are all uh, suggestions, right? They're, they're targets. They're targets. There you go. That's the right word. We're going to do it. One hour. We'll do it. We also have uh, installed uh, touchless light switches in the bathroom um, and uh, um, uh, towel dispensers. And so we're trying to make as much as we can uh, a no-touch situation. 
Um, I will say the timers on those switches are not long, so move quick. Um, we also, uh, um, for this beginning season at least, we are suspending, uh, we're not going to do coffee uh, uh, during our gathering times. We're not going to do snacks with our, our kids um, just to, to kind of keep that safe, less touches. And also our bulletins, we're not going to be passing out bulletins for this season um, for, uh, for the first bit. And then we'll see, see how that goes. Um, I'm going to have to drink up the coffee before I get here. That, it is true. Uh, we haven't talked about BYOC. Bring your own coffee. Yeah, we haven't really discussed that, but maybe I shouldn't have brought it up. Um, another thing we're doing is uh, this is a, a really big thing, and so um, uh, face masks. Uh, we are not requiring uh, individuals to wear face masks as you come back to church, but we do recognize the preference of wearing those. And so if you feel more comfortable wearing a face mask, we want to encourage you to wear that face mask. If you don't uh, see a need to wear one, we wanna also encourage you there. And so whatever your comfort level is with those things, um, we wanna leave it in your hands to decide that. And so if you show up with a mask or you don't, it doesn't mean you're safer or unsafer, filled with more faith or not. It's just up to you and what you feel comfortable. We wanna be able to invite you back uh, to those weekend gatherings for there. Uh, we have decided that during this initial phase of opening back up that we are not going to offer a uh, full service nursery. We are going to make the nursery available for a self-serve. Um, if you need that, you're more than welcome to use that as a family. Also, we have a new mom's room um, that is located in our kids area that will be available for you as well. Um, both of those having the sermons uh, on TV in there so you can watch if you, if you need to take advantage of that. Um, we are going to be functioning uh, with our full kids ministry. And so for, for children's ministry, this is what we've decided is that um, we have taken precautions of check-in to do those things a little bit differently, to, to again, be a little less uh, touching in, of the, the screens and things. But you as a parent, we want to uh, give you the opportunity to discern and use your wisdom on what you feel comfortable with um, as far as your children and, and kids ministry. If you feel comfortable, we'd love for, to have them apart. If you don't, we would also invite you to still be here and to uh, keep your children with you in the, the main gathering time. Um, Pastor Scotty um, and Megan have been working really hard to pull together uh, just an opportunity for kids to be ministered to on their level in a safe environment. And so we're really, really happy about that. Also, um, Compelled Student Ministries will be starting back up on uh, June 22nd, so that Monday at 7 p.m. Um, so we want to, to make sure that uh, all the youth know that. We're excited about that. Pastor Dusty's excited about that. And then this summer, something that's big for us is Vacation Bible School. Every year, um, that's a, a landmark event for us, so to speak. And so we have postponed that or moved it a little bit. And so we are really looking at, at uh, August, um, having a VBS for the church and and uh, that's at least what we're moving towards and we're going to see how everything goes but we're excited about that we've had VBS for 24 years it's a staple back when we used to do it remember those days I'd say that there's some things that have gotten better <laughs> a little bit I wasn't going to say that all right go ahead uh, and then the final thing, which um, at this point we've already launched um, in, in some sort, is uh, our small groups ministry. We believe that that, that community together is so important. We've always uh, believed that. It's part of our, our values um, is small groups. And so as of right now, you can uh, jump in and get involved in some virtual small groups that are available on our website. But we are also going to be launching our normal groups and getting back to that and, and, uh, and allowing uh, people to come together and uh, be discipled and encouragement and fellowship. And so um, th those can be found on our, our website uh, and the small group tab and all the information is there for you. Well, I really appreciate our teams, uh, everybody that we have had that have made our online experiences. We've been doing online church for over 15 years, so that's not new to us, but we did add the Facebook premiere and we did add the online campus with the interaction. That's all gonna continue. And so let me, let, me, let me say something. I want you to really hear my heart. We really believe that many of you may not be comfortable yet returning to a gathering. Please, if that's you, feel no impulse to have to attend. 
we support everyone's personal adult decision and what they feel comfortable doing and we're going to celebrate that and so if you're like i don't know if i'm ready to come back in because if you come into uh, the gathering somebody might sit behind you um somebody you sit, see if that makes you feel uncomfortable man just just take a few more weeks that's okay don't worry about that at all there's no judgment um, there, there will be nothing but support for what you feel right to do for you and your family. We want to uh, provide a safe environment, like Pastor Rick said, but we also want to make sure uh, that you have the choices that you need to make. And if you're not ready to come back yet, that's great. We, we, we're good with that. Keep worshiping with us online and uh, keep connected. And I don't know if we've covered everything that you may have, but man, can, can I just say thanks for being patient. I know a lot of churches have opened it up already. Um, we, we're not gonna be the first to open, obviously, but we're not gonna be the last either. So I really appreciate the support, something that I've enjoyed every week as you guys have been so generous. There are a lot of, a lot of you that have mailed in uh, your offering or dropped it in the slot and you, you wrote me a little note or that we're praying for the staff and you really appreciate us. That's been Sometimes that's just manna from heaven, and I really appreciate the encouragement. I really appreciate your generosity and your patience through, man, a, a pretty difficult time, but uh, it looks like we're going to make it through. One last thing we want to communicate is that when we open, our plan is to have the worship center set up as normal. And so um, with that, just to be aware that when you come in, the seating is not going to be uh, distance apart. But if the worship center does fill up, we also have in place a few overflow options. And so um, we will kind of look at the weekend and see how that goes. And then if we need those, uh, we'll open those up so that uh, we can feel comfortable in those different settings and that to accommodate all those who want to show up for the weekend. Yeah. And so just be aware as you come in to be seated, don't everyone sit on an aisle row because some people may not want to get in kind of scoot toward the middle or go toward the front and if you want to get out uh leave the center without talking to somebody sit toward the back and when i close in prayer you can just make your exit and i'm giving you permission to do that that's that's totally fine it's going to be a wonderful weekend to get back together on father's day weekend man it's been a it's been a tough season i think we made it rick i think so yeah so uh, we're looking forward to it. And again, if you're not comfortable yet, it's all good. Uh, when you are comfortable and you come back, we'll, we'll celebrate either way. And God is good. So let's keep going and let's uh, continue to be compelled by his love. See you soon.
uncomfortable, lift your hands, sing it out. Here I stand, I surrender. Oh